Hello and welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Captain Kib, signing on today. And today we're looking at Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. There was some new gameplay that was uh, shown on a YouTube channel that I watched, and we'll go through that in a, a, a few minutes here, basically of what MechCon, what uh, the new Mech Warrior 5 looks like. But there's a couple things we can already see, and we can start actually not just speculating, but actually analyzing a few things. So I've taken some screenshots of the video so I don't miss anything, and we can go over some things that are leaked so to speak, leaked by the footage. Uh, so first I want to start at the top. If you can sort of make it out, I know I'll try to enhance this a little bit, but there's a button that says Home, Mech Lab, Star Map, Market, Operations, Barracks, Mission Briefing, Drop Preparation. So I already like a couple of things I see right off the bat here. Home, I'm obviously that just takes you back to the home screen. Mech Lab, customizing your mechs. Star Map means you can go and explore, and, or explore, but take out of the contracts, go to different locations. That's what I'm assuming that means. Sort of like how the Battletech game looks and works like uh, in 2018. Uh, market, that's where we can probably purchase items, I'd wager, and sell other excess uh, salvage and things like that. Operations, probably, that's where you go and view the various missions. Barracks, maybe there is a level up system or sort of perks, or I'm not sure how they're going to work it. I have no idea. They might base off the uh, Time of War, the Battletech RP, or similar to the Battletech 2018 RPG by Harebrained Schemes. No idea of that. That's just purely speculatory. Mission briefing. All right, so this is the tab we're currently looking at. So we can see our employer is Close Cavaliers, and I can't quite make out that faction 100%. I, it's the Spider Boys. I can't remember their names. Uh, but you got reputation levels. I already like this off the bat here. You got friendly with them and your enemies with them. So you can kind of work your reputation. That's good. I like that. Um, then you can see the contract details. Red Harvest is probably the name of the mission. Locate and kill Cyrus Howell. So it's a, you know, it's a basically a, a, a assassination mission. Your goal is to kill him. That's the only goal you have. Captain Cyrus Howell is leading the Black Inferno forces. Oh, there you go. In their invasion of Smolnik, of this Smolnik system. Hunt him down and kill him. Pretty simple. Hopefully that means we'll have varying uh, degrees of mission types. One thing, this is early access, so... And the footage quality is on a phone or recorded device that didn't quite capture things. So me taking screen caps of it, even though it was in HD, still didn't quite turn out that great. So you'll have to forgive how hideous it looks. Now, there's a few things texture-wise I see. This is early access. Uh, launch date is September 10th, 2019. But already the texture back here, these mountains, oof, that's... It's really ugly. But uh, again, we'll excuse that for now because we're going to say it's early access. They've got about a year to get that sorted. Sorted. Next thing, environmental data. This is interesting. So we have the biome. There's different biome types. Autumn forest, the time of which missions take place. So we can have varying degrees of time, parameters for each mission type. That's cool. And the weather, light snow. So I'm wondering how they're going to work the weather effects. You know, be it on a desert planet, sandstorms, winter planets, blizzards, or, you know, some sort of jungle bog or something like that. Varying weather degrees, varying biome types, frost world, lava worlds. Hopefully that actually plays into the gameplay like frost world obviously you won't overheat as much or build up as much heat versus a lava world which you will have a lot harder time keeping heat and lasers would be a bit of a pain to you know feel and then you also have cloud coverage which is kind of useful it helps you know it doesn't that doesn't really determine too much in terms of gameplay yet i'm not sure if cloud coverage and weather plays into air units coming into play on the map so let's say it's a super bad storm and you know, the, it's pretty bad out, right? Well, maybe airplanes and helicopters might not show up on the mission or reinforcements either or. I'm not sure how they're gonna work that system. Again, we'll have to see uh, what kind of world types we'll have in the Battletech universe. Wind, moderate, not sure if that, see these two things, the cloud cover and wind, I want to know more information. What, all right, that's cool aesthetically, but what do they do in terms of gameplay? That is important. The weather effects and the time can easily, that's self-explanatory. Same goes for the biome, it's just sort of the tile set. Um, visibility, there's a trace of mist, so that is some useful information right there. Then you got mission, mission information by some characters. Now the voice acting from the footage I've seen so far is very lackluster, disappointing uh, to be honest, but we'll go through the footage. I'll have a link in the description as well as the comments. Please check that out, I defer to that. I will not be using the audio from the video because it is so egregiously bad. Be warned, it is just not good recorded audio. Um, so now we have contract items. So 
the mission type, but we varying degrees of mission types, the base payout, which is 100,000 C bills, employer modifier, yes, reputation modifier, yes, transport coverage, yes. So these are nice. We can already see that the contracts have a little bit of weight to them. Salvage rights, zero. Support rights, zero. Support rights, I'm curious to know. Is that off-map support, such as artillery or orbital bombardments, which are against the Ares Convention, but don't mind that. Um, or, you know, air support or reinforcements, like, or supply drops. Like, I'm wondering how the support will work, or what does that mean in terms of support rights? I don't know. We need to, we need, I, I do hope they do an actual breakdown of more of the gameplay stuff. And then strike type, which is basically the mission type. It's assassination. Final payout, which tallies up at 100,000 bills flat. And command rights are independent. So that means unit commands fall under the independent forces. That's what I assume. Or they're independent of the Lance Command. So I'm wondering, can we command allied forces that aren't playable? Bear in mind, this is four play up to four players cooperative, which is pretty interesting. That is good. I like that. So players can pop in, pop out. They did also say that there will be mod support from the sounds of it. Again, this is early into it, so we don't know 100%, so that could go either or, but mod support, that sounds excellent. I do hope that we get mod support, because that will have some of the some of the things that I saw in the footage that kind of upset me, perhaps can be negated. And again, it is early access, so but I'm going to be a pessimist here, because again, we need to see more gameplay. And this is just only 20 minutes of gameplay. Here we can see the inside of the Leopard dropship. This is sort of the uh, catwalk where you can view the four mechs that are playable uh, in the sort of demo. You got a dragon over there, and I think that's a thunderbolt, catapult, and I can't quite make out that one. But um, yeah, so kind of interesting. There are different rooms of the ship. I'm wondering, can we customize the leopard? Is there various things we can do with the ship, or is it limited? So here's another room that I was able to see. I'm assuming the star map is right here. Here you can see the mech loadout, so players come over here to customize their mechs. That's really cool. It's drop in, drop out from the sounds of it. I like that. I like that a lot, but I'm hoping we can customize the ship a little bit more. That's one thing I was disappointed with Vermintide, because I'm going to compare Vermintide and Deep Rock Galactic to a game like this, because they share a lot of core philosophies in terms of similarity. They're both sort of procedural in their own rights, and they both function relatively similar from how we've been described the game. As in, it's sandbox-like, you take missions, you complete objectives, do various things, except this one will be very different on how you do it, because you're more of like a mercenary. Sort of similar, a throwback to Mech Warriors 4 Mercenaries, which I think is awesome, uh, and that's one of my favorites, besides Mech Warrior 3, but not to dilly-dally too much. On to the next image. This is another image I took that was kind of interesting. This is inside of the cockpit. Bear in mind, this looks very reminiscent UI-wise from Mech Warrior 4. So, eh, like, I wasn't... Or not Mech Warrior 4, pardon. Mech Warrior Online. And I'm not a huge fan of Mech Warrior Online because the, their pay model was just not really my cup of tea at the end of the day. And just the fact that there's no stability checks and just some of the lackluster features in the game, like no uh, support, no vehicle support, and it's just basically three on three lances, which just kind of, eh. I would be okay with like a lance on lance combat op supported by AIs and allowing you to respawn with a few different mechs that you bring with you. Sort of similar to War Thunder. That's what I kind of wanted with that. But not too dilly dally on hypotheticals. Let's look at what else there is in here. Here we can see our lance mates in the top left corner. We got four lance mates, so it's, it's a full lance. You can order them with the keys. That's good. You can select them. So that's probably more for the AI thing, but you can coordinate with players as well. That is good. So we see some command functions here, um, which is very, very good. Uh, let's see. And just to highlight that for you, fellas. Oh, big pardon. There we go. Right here. I'll try to do that more. Here we can just see the navigation. So we got in the west. They're heading west. So that's okay. And here's the map down here. You got the acceleration. Now, the weight, we'll, when we get to the gameplay footage, I'll talk a little bit more about weight and rotation and heat buildup. Uh, and then we got the, you know, front and rear armor. This is front right here. This is rear. I know the YouTube screenshot didn't quite capture it. And the various weapon groupings over there. Other than that, like it's it's very reminiscent of Mech Warrior Online, which I'm not too surprised with. Uh, it's not a bad formula, but uh, I don't know the UI. I'm I'm hoping there's some customization options to the UI so we can move things around. Because I I kind of want the weapons up here, sort of like the old school ones, and I'd probably move the mini map. 
I don't know, I feel like I'd switch some things around, but that's just personal preference. I'm hoping the UI is customizable because that would be excellent. Um, and I'm wondering how much we can look around the cockpit. One thing when we get to the gameplay footage, I'm gonna mention before we actually get into it, is he doesn't unlock his arms, so I'm assuming this is guy, you know, I'd see a lot of people ripping on him in the comments in that video. He's probably, you know, first time playing or something like that, so, you know. Cut the guy a little bit of slack. Every mech warrior's green when they start out. Okay, so first thing here, you know, we got some more footage. Dialogue pops up here. Just wanted to point that out. Found that interesting. Missions will pop up here, and I'll show you that a little bit more. And here we get to see some aircraft. So that's kind of interesting. We got different degrees of aircraft. We also have different vehicle types. So that's good. Mixes up combat. One thing that really bothered me in this footage, no civilians in the city at all. That really bugs me. The fact that there were no citizens or civilians running around, you know, in the city, uh, made it feel a little bit disconnected from the universe. Made it feel like, okay, yeah, everybody evacuated. It's like Transformers where mechs are hurled through, or Transformers were hurled through, through buildings and they didn't kill anybody. Like, come on, cut me some slack. You can't tell me, and I've read enough Battletech to know, that one of these mechs bumps into one of these friggin' buildings, it's gonna do a heck of a lot of damage. And about the destruction of buildings, which I'll get to in just a sec. The destruction of buildings bothers me greatly. Because this mission, which we'll watch in a second here, they come here to help these people, right? Supposedly, allegedly. And they end up destroying the entire fucking settlement. So, a lot of good help they did. In fact, I think they honestly made it worse. But, um... Buildings can just sort of walk through... Or Mexicans sort of walk through... Sorry. Mexicans sort of walk through buildings with no problem. And that bothers me. They, they're sort of like paper mache. Uh, even the thicker buildings. They just bump into them, the building just crumbles. That's not really how it works in Battletech. Mechs can crash it, or easily stomp over like little houses, things like that. That's nothing. But these big concrete steel structures with steel beams, yeah, they can't really plow through them. They can't really walk through them. Because that's just, they, mechs can't do that. They don't have the strength to do that. They can break through quite a bit of solid material, but they're also going to take damage. And that's one thing I hope we see. When the mech steps on tanks, which you'll see in the video, you know, takes leg damage because that is, you know, stepping on a moving vehicle. And I did not see any stability checks in the game. Also, I want, like, so they're defending these buildings and they're going to get paid out by this, the people from here. That needs to be a gameplay mechanic. As in, if you're defending these people, so to speak, the less damage done to the infrastructure and the city should get you more money. Adversely, the more damage done to the city or the inhabitants that you're supposedly or allegedly protecting, the less money and less reputation. Because again, you are here to protect these people and you're sort of a knight and, you know, a battle mech. And it's not very honorable when the whole city's in flaming tatters and you just like, you know, oh yeah, I totally helped. The city's destroyed. At the end of the video, you'll see the like a camera pan and it's just ruins. It's like, well, we didn't really save anything. The city's in utter tatters. In fact, it's worse off than when it was under the regime of this. Now, a couple of new mechanics that I noticed in the footage towards the latter end, they did bring back the mech repair bay, and you're gonna see that it doesn't really repair all that much. You can see it just boosts up the armor levels. You know, it was, the mech's only in there for like a few seconds. So mech uh, repair time is pretty short. Uh, and that's okay. I, I mean, it just restocks your ammo. It doesn't do much um, other than that. Here we can see the missions popping up here. Mission objectives. So missions will be mission parameters will be adjusted as the game goes on, which I find rather interesting. So you'll get more missions that'll appear, and then you can achieve these objectives. And I'm hoping that that gives you more salvage rights, more money, and encourages you to work more as a team or as a lance. Um, the next and last image here is support vehicles. We got two little kawaii tanks. One, two. Those look awesome. But um, this is nice. This is a, just a quality of life thing with Battletech or Mech Warrior. Having other units on the field besides the player has always made it feel like a grander operation. NPCs, even if they're friendly, you know, they just help out in combat. And plus, it allows them to up the scales of the engagement. The more allies you have the more enemies you can have at the same time because it displaces fire therefore it sort of helps to balance it out but makes you feel like the battles can scale up because in the final battle in this video which i'm about to show you is going to show off you know 
just a, a ton of mechs and armored vehicles clashing. And it looks rather good. One thing I want to point out, though, is the mechs do have a tendency to, and so do the vehicles, to just run into buildings. Now, bear in mind, it was, after reading through some of the comments, I've discovered that uh, the people that were playing not only are super new to the game, or rather have no experience at all, uh, based on what we're going to see here, but they are also um, playing on easy, allegedly. Link to the actual full video is in the description. Again, we're just sort of analyzing this content right now. Um, and I'm playing it on speed times two with no audio because I don't, like, you, if you guys want to see it, you, like, properly, you can go through there and watch it. So, that was kind of interesting, you know, you could see them pop into the mech there. We're going to skim forward into a little bit after the power-up phase into where combat, a little bit before where combat begins. The dialogue as a whole is really disappointing. The writing is a bit of a letdown. And yes, it is moving really fast because it's in speed too. There's a little bit of bounce to its step. I honestly don't mind that. I saw some people complain that there's like, oh, it should have more bounce. Eh, I mean, they should add a little bit more. They can, but not too much because trust me, like when you start making it bounce up and down too much, it just it's a quality of life thing in terms of gameplay. It just gets really nasty. In terms of rotation, the mech feels a lot more weighty from the footage I've seen before in terms of acceleration and deceleration. Um, so I'm liking some of the improvements there, but I'm hoping they'll tweak it more. So, and I hope we get to see a little bit more different mech sizes. You can see some of the hovercraft are now engaging the mechs. Uh, the player is not particularly good. He is using a joystick, which is good. Um, and I'm hoping that this game is promoting joystick use. So, and we can definitely see that joysticks are back in play. Uh, hopefully they're really nice because if you want to play MechWarrior properly, you got to use a joystick. And the way MechWarrior Online was streamlined really killed it, for me at least, because it just didn't have the joystick feel to the game. It, it didn't, like, it, it didn't promote, you couldn't play competitively with people and not use a mouse and keyboard because the joystick was literally inferior the way the game was designed. Sort of like War Thunder, it, it made it inferior, which is kind of a disappointment. Now, one thing you're probably going to notice is the fact that he turns his back to the enemy quite frequently and just takes shots in the ass all the time. Again, I think that's just him being a new player. You can see damage being done to the mech. The mech damage looks interesting, and after battle, we'll actually be able to see the mech's, like, seared metal and stuff like that. I'd like to point out that they were supposedly defending this farm as they're waddling around destroying it. Again, this is to point out that I have problems with some of the game, being that, you know, you're supposed to be defending these people, why I do not know because they can't pay you um, again I hope there's options too in terms of like we're not just the generic good guy going around defending the poor helpless farmers and citizens who can't defend themselves in terms of Battletech writing it's not about that you're a mercenary you're in it for the money yeah honor and nobility have a, a part to play but as a mercenary money and sea bills supersede that so to salvage so in terms of like defending the settlement, there is little to gain monetarily or salvage-wise from aiding them that much. And again, the characters that you'll see in the dialogue when you watch the video uh, just sort of go like, oh, we gotta protect them, oh, we gotta protect them. It's like, eh. Like, what would be interesting to see if the various characters they introduce to you, right? From the various houses. If you have a Steiner character and they're in uh, Draconis Combine space, they don't care, perhaps, about the, the people at all. And I do hope the architecture resembles that, right? Steiner should be Germanic, uh, and Draconis should obviously be uh, Asian or, you know, obviously J Japanese roots. I do hope we see that, instead of the generic, just regular old sci-fi. And again, we can see the vehicle mech just plowing through these buildings with no damage being taken, it's, and it's just too easy. Honestly, as, as they plow through it, they need to feel like weight. They can't feel like paper. That way the mech feels like it. Look at that tank. Do you see it just plow through the building too? Like, it just feels... The buildings feel like no, they don't have any weight to them. Which takes away the acceleration and deceleration weight that they've added. And makes it feel completely negligible. The way the mech can just plow through structures like that. We need to see mechs have a lot more weight in the universe. Because mechs are huge towering war machines. I'd also not mind if they'd adjust the tonnage system because, you know, the assault mech's only weighing 100 tons. Uh, I'm pretty sure those tanks right there weigh more than 100 tons. <laughs> and we just got another mech's tank stepped on. All in all, I mean, the, the game looks fun. 
but there are some things like the whole stability check. I don't see mechs falling over too much. Perhaps that's not because we don't have enough pushing weapons. Um, we didn't quite see the fire starter use its flames, or I might have missed it. There goes a leopard dropship. It is cool to see leopard dropships and uh, other dropships to drop off units and actually physically deploy them. That is a nicety that I really like. The AI also, it's just, I don't know, from its reactions, also look how he just rear rear ends those buildings with no no fucking concern. I do hope we get a rear view mirror button because that would be useful. If they add weight to the buildings. The emergency shutdown, he overheated. That's still a mechanic. So that's good to see that back in the game. Though it was relatively short and even in the regular footage. It seemed a little bit cut. Um, and there's Cicada. I mean, it looks solid. The gunplay, the weapon play, it looks fun. And, they, I mean, they got the symbols to tell you, you know, heavy. Three dots represent heavy. A single dot is a light? Right? Or no, no, no. A no dot diamond is a light. One dot is a medium. And three dots is a heavy, I think. I think that's how they're doing it. I'm not 100%. I'm wondering if they're going to introduce ultralights, and I do hope we see infantry. Again, look at the city, devoid of any inhabitants. When There should be people like falling out of the buildings, flying out, burning. Battletech is a grim universe. It shouldn't be so sparse. It feel, Like, the world feels empty. It just feels like you're in a set piece. Also, I just want to point out something graphically. I know I'm nitpicking a little here, but that's mostly because I want the game to succeed more than anything. The grass is too big. The Like, the grass blades of grass like they're physically way too big certain things need to be reskilled a little bit in my opinion to make the mechs feel larger and the blades of grass definitely don't help with that because it it feels like you're actually just playing a shooter like you're only a little tall the trees help to put it in perspective if you ignore the grass overall level design looks pretty solid you don't see the rocks having too many issues rendering now now that it's in, but the weird preload map thing had some issues looking at the rocks. There's that mech repair bay coming over to the dockyard. Mission design looks interesting. It sounds like they're going to be using pre-made tile sets, and then they'll mix and match it. Hopefully it's got a good system. I mean, we've seen it work with games like Deep Rock Galactic, where they have pre-made tile sets, and it works all right. I mean, even Diablo does that as well. And we have four allied vehicles on the map. Uh, well, they're on the map. Though they're on the map physically, but I don't see them popping up on the mini. Except for those two allied vehicles in front. And then you can see the leopard dropship come in. And he's got that little item in it. What would be interesting to see is leopard dropships doing strafing missiles with their missiles. Or perhaps, you know, being able to damage a dropship and do damage to it and possibly destroy it if it takes long. Leopards, though, a leopard a thing about a leopard dropship is it's meant for rapid deployment of battle mechs. And just units in general, so it probably wouldn't. But if you had enough firepower, you could probably take it down. Again, you'll probably see him step on a poor little fucking tank here. I mean, I'm not sure how many, how much time these guys got to play the game. And the fact that they're not focusing fire on, you know, targets, backing up, exposing their backs to things, makes me suspect that they, they're just playing the game for the first time. Because that is one of the early mistakes you make. Just running in there, you know... Also, their weapon loadouts are pretty bad. They must be pre-made because it's it's too much intermix with long, medium, and short range when you should really just focus on a certain specialization and then have a couple backups. And I'm, I'm just nitpicking here, but... That is something that you'll probably be able to customize because it is a mech warrior thing. The AI is on easy, and it just looks kind of derpy as it just derps about. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit more from the AI. Considering how noobish this team is... And how uncoordinated they are, I'm not surprised they put it on easy. Because if they hadn't, uh, they'd probably be dead looking at their armor right now. But yeah, no. I mean, look at all the damage and carnage they've done. That's not going to be a penalty. I don't know. I have high hopes. There's a lot of time to uh, fix these things. And if, if uh, Piranha Games needs the time, honestly, you know, postpone the development. Another thing, besides stability damage and, and mechs falling over we need... We need the different sort of mech detonations. So you get the pilot shot, you know, where you kill the pilot, or you get the uh, fusion reactor, and it goes thermal. 
which sends out super heat or super uh, heated air and pretty much acts as like a nuclear explosion. But yeah, now that's that. Either way, uh, it looks interesting. It looks good. There's a lot I see that I, I really, really hope they change before they launch. And again, it is it is about a year out. So more than likely, a lot of this can change. The grass can be easily changed. Um, a lot of that stuff is relatively easy fixes. Uh, but the building thing, like they need to add more weight to that. We need mechs to feel like they've got weight. We need we need more meat to the game. We need a lot more meat. We need infantry. Hell, even jump jet infantry. And we need that infantry climbing mechanic. Why? Because imagine if mechs could just stomp on infantry. Well, you just do that. It's it's relatively easy. It's a balanced mechanic when the mechs can't stomp on infantry and the fire starters and the lights have to go mop up the lighter units. That's another role that the light mechs actually play in Battletech. They've got to mop up, you know, lighter ground vehicles and infantry. Um, so I'm hoping that infantry will be a thing. I did see turrets in earlier footage, so turrets, base defenses, tanks, various types of tanks, hovercraft even, aircraft, hopefully naval vessels as well, uh, and hopefully fighters as well, because I didn't see any fighters yet, but I have seen helicopters and uh, varying degrees of, or types of helicopters, which is good, uh, multiple amounts of battle mechs. So there's, it's already looks like it's got a lot of meat on it, but we need some flavor, some seasoning, so to speak, not to use too many analogies here, and to really make that game sink. It's got the foundation from what I've seen in terms of footage, but we need to see a lot more improvements on a couple of other things. I'm hoping that Brana Games, you know, is adheres to what people are asking for, uh, and they actually do that because I think at the end of the day that will make or break the game. And having excellent mod tools, I don't want to, you know, dilly dally here too much longer, but mod tools are an integral part of this game. They're going to have to be. We need good, intuitive mod tools so that modders can reinvigorate the game and keep it alive long past you know the developer's uh, original expectations. So we need a robust modding scene, like something on the on to put it in comparison, something uh, equivalent to uh, Warcraft 3's modding. You know, just spectacular, intuitive, easy to use. You know, upload workshop support on Steam. Uh, and hell, even encourage the modding community with like contests and stuff like that. Be proactive and get that modding community to flourish. Because I think the modding community could, even if, if like even if they don't do what I say, right, or do what we want, not just what I say, but these are also things that very com uh, various comments that I've read too. If they don't listen to those things, like if they can also get away with that, but it would still be bad. But if we could at least mod it. I think it could be salvaged. And uh, I'm just hoping we see modding. A good boon in modding. But uh, other than that, the base game looks fine. Um, it looks... I mean, it looks better than MechWare Online. That's not saying much. But I w I'm hoping to see more. More meat. And infantry and vehicles. Look at these streets. They're devoid of life. These buildings are hollow, empty. It just doesn't feel like anything. It should be bloody. It should be gory. If you look at some Battletech artwork done by some pretty spectacular artists, you'll see, uh, you know, mechs just stomping on things and blood squirting everywhere. It's it is a messy universe when you have giant titans walking around, blasting the literal fuck out of everything. Uh, but I mean, it it looks good, and I wanna I wanna like it. But we need to see more, and we need to see some improvements on some of these things. At least I I definitely do in order to really get behind this product here. Either way, not to dilly-dally too much further, please check out the link in the description. Let me know what you guys think uh, about the game. Like, what do you want to see added? Um, and I'll be forwarding that along. I'll probably compose, like, uh, an email or something and send that to them. I doubt they'll listen, but eh. It couldn't hurt to at least try because we love the game so much. Uh, but, yeah. Well, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all around then. Take it easy.